Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the new 2024 Ford Ranger and this is the Raptor trim. The first time this trim has ever come to the US shores. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of this one and an XLT or Lariat just to show you all the options that are available and see how this compares to its main competition from Chevy and Toyota. Stay tuned. Huge thanks to Ford for having us out to Camp Ranger to experience all the new 2024 Ford Rangers here. This is the top trim. This is the new Raptor. This is the first time that the Ranger Raptor has made it to US shores. And if you know anything about the Raptor trims on different vehicles, you know that this shares a lot with the Ford Bronco Raptor that is based off the Ranger architecture. So we get a three liter uh, V6 under the hood. It is the most powerful in the segment with over or <laughs> right at 95 more horsepower than its main competition in the Chevy Colorado ZR2. So we've got 405 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque, which is right on par with the ZR2 from Chevrolet. So very powerful V6 engine here. It is their EcoBoost V6, which is a big plus uh, in the power department, but closing the hood, you can see this borrows from uh, other Ranger models in the Ford lineup. We get Ford spelled out across uh, the front right there. Very big, very bold, emphasizing the width and strength of this vehicle. We've got these performance LED headlights that look really awesome, really uh, stand out. We've got additional ground clearance on this one, additional bash plates on this one, a lot of off-road protection on this. We also have those two and a half inch Fox live valve shocks and that Watts link rear suspension for very capable off-roading. So speaking of that Watts link rear suspension, another unique feature of the updated Ranger uh, suspension is the outboard position of those shock mounting points. So much like on the competition from the Colorado ZR2, we've moved those right next to the wheels so that that low mounting point of those Fox shocks is not a, another obstacle that you have to worry about while uh, traversing off-road. It travels with that wheel and tire and kind of has that tire there to protect it. But you can see just how big those uh, shocks are with coilover springs right there. So another unique, interesting uh, adaptation here for the Ranger Raptor in the midsize pickup truck segment. This thing has been tested shortly after all the COVID travel restrictions lifted in Australia and across the globe because this is a very important global vehicle for Ford uh, when it comes to their off-road capability. And it really is the world's F-150. So of course, we gotta get a Raptor version of it. Moving inside, you get some Raptor specific seats with orange accents everywhere. All the Raptor logos on this one look really cool. They're bolstered, very nice uh, to sit in, hold you in place when running on the desert. And you can see we've got some Alcantara accents. We even have Alcantara wrapping that secondary glove box, a little storage tray right here, and our largest in the segment 12 inch uh, infotainment screen here and a full digital gauge cluster in this one. We do have an electronic gear selector right here. So uh, that is something on Lariat and Raptor trims. Uh, lower trims do actually get a mechanical uh, selecting unit right there. And much like on Bronco Raptor, we get a dial right here for all your different drive modes as well as some buttons right there for some off-road uh, drive modes as well. Moving to the back seat, again, more of the same with the Ranger specific seats back here. All the orange accents on this one looks really cool, uh, really stands out when you're talking about other uh, Ranger models. This one does have the graphics package running down the side and 33 inch KO2 BF Goodrich uh, tires on this one. They uh, are really specific on these 33 inch because as you go up in tire size, you lose wheel travel. So very specific that even though uh, Bronco Raptor, which is based on this, gets bigger wheels and tires, uh, this keeps 33s. So again, staying in line with some of the competition from Chevrolet. You can see back here on the back, again, borrowing heavily from other Raptor models in the lineup, we get through those very wide dual exit exhaust pipes out back and two exhaust or two 
recovery hook points right here on the side of uh, the bed as well. So a very capable pickup truck, lots going on here with the Ranger line and then all the other goodies from the other models that we showed you earlier with the uh, different uh, attachment points on the top of the bed and your clamp points here on the tailgate as well. So very usable truck all the way around. Very interested, very excited to see more of these vehicles out on the road. And while I'm coming back around to the front, while this is not as wide as the Bronco Raptor, we don't get those big over fenders like Bronco Raptor does. This is three inch, does have a three inch wider track than the standard Ranger. And you can see these are unique fenders here. So wider fender here and a bigger over fender here on uh, the uh, tops of the wheels right there. So very capable, very uh, aggressive stance here on Ranger Raptor. Very excited for uh, the future of off-roading mid-sized pickup trucks. And again, Ford's very proud of their three liter EcoBoost, most powerful in the segment by 95 horsepower. That's quite an achievement right there. So now I'm here with the XLT trim, and this one appeals more to me if I were to actually spend my own hard-earned dollars on a Ford Ranger, because this is more of the everyman truck, the everyman trim of the truck. This really shows why the Ford Ranger is a global vehicle. First thing I wanna call out is the styling of this vehicle. So the last generation Ranger really was designed for the world market and brought to America after. This was designed with American buyers in mind first and foremost. So knowing that this truck was coming to the States and was gonna be sold here in America, uh, they really applied that design philosophy to making this a baby F-150 that does slot more capable above that Maverick and does play a much different role. Ford does call this the world F-150 because that is really what this vehicle is for around the world. Uh, for. Uh, markets where the roads aren't as big, parking spots aren't as large, and you're dealing with alleys and uh, smaller overall driving options, this is a much more maneuverable vehicle than F-150. And again, it is a world vehicle. So maneuverability was a key factor when designing this one. It is two inches wider and has a two inch longer wheelbase. They moved that front axle forward two inches, much like its competition from Chevy in the Colorado to give you a better approach angle. And then uh, they made it wider and we'll get more into that in the bed back in the back. But you can see the C-clamp headlights up front, very similar to a uh, the Ranger that or the Raptor that we saw earlier, but much more toned down. I really like this one is an FX4 XLT. So you get all these black accents. You can see there is a forward facing camera right there under the Ford badge. Coming around to the side here, you can see the black accents over the wheel wheels, which give it a much taller looking appearance than uh, having body color, but on certain trims, you can get body color wheel arches as well. You can see even up here on the front, that is a fully functional fender vent right there. They didn't put anything on this truck that did not serve a functional purpose. You can see we've got Goodyear Wrangler uh, tires on this one because again, it is the FX4 model. And because it's an XLT, we don't get body color door handles, we get actual plastic door handles. And then I wanna call out right here before we get too far inside, the new Ford key. So this one is a switchblade key, but uh, you can see we've got our lock, unlock, and remote buttons there on it as well. But very new design. This one does actually still require a key. It's not a fully push button. Uh, platform, but in the instance that you did have a proximity key, the push button would be right there. So we've got two different uh, digital gauge clusters. We've got two different uh, infotainment screens here. So we can range from an eight inch screen here to a 12.4 inch and uh, various different options there. Then we've got a 10 or this upgraded 12 inch vertical screen. Uh, Ford said it was very important that uh, their consumers get a screen that looks integrated into the dash. I really like the different use of materials here, different storage right here. The Ranger Raptor did get a secondary glove box right here, but it doesn't look like this opens here on the XLT. 
And coming down here, the XLT trim actually gets a mechanical uh, gear selector for the automatic transmission, where the Lariat and Raptor get that electronic unit. We still get a lot of controls very similar to Bronco and the Ranger Raptor there, and very large uh, center console right here with a spot to put your key if you need it. This one does have cloth seats here. So I wanted to give you a look here at the cloth seats, what that looks like on an XLT trim. They are a redesigned seat again for the American market to make sure that American customers found them comfortable on long-term rides and stuff like that. You can see at 510, I've got plenty of room. So this is a power seat. It's, is not exactly where I'd have it, but I'm gonna move it forward so I can see exactly what it would be like in my driving position. I am getting a little bit better angle here now at the smaller digital gauge cluster. You can see it does not fill up the entire area, but the Ranger Raptor did. So yeah, much larger screen on those trims right there. But we're gonna pop out of the front seat here and pop into the back seat and show you what it's like sitting behind myself at 510. Very easy pickup truck to get into. I've got a nice bit of leg room back here. Nice cutout on the back of the front seat right here. No map pocket on the driver, but we do have a map pocket on the passenger. No vents, but you do get a nice big cubby here. Some power on the back of the center console. I like that a whole lot. And then something that they are very proud of in the segment is the storage options. So we do have a fold down center armrest, if I can get it right there with two cup holders. So that is very nice. And then we have a 100 split or 100% lifting seat bottom right here that you can store dirty items right here because this is hard plastic. You can store whatever you want because it's going to be hidden under the seat right here. So I don't like that it's the full seat bottom. We had the same problem in the Maverick. When you put your uh, child safety seat in this, you can't get under it whatsoever. But what Ford is most proud of is right here, a full fold flat uh, seat back. So Colorado and Canyon got rid of this for the new 2023 model year. Uh, Ranger it worked very hard to implement this in the back. So if you had some uh, dog carriers or some larger items that you wanted to secure inside the cab of your truck, that is the way to go. So. Very interesting and exclusive feature here to the Ranger. And of course, all Rangers are fully crew cab, no extended cab here, like the upcoming Tacoma has been teased to be. And then coming around back to the back, you can see being the FX4, we get the black accents down low. We'll call out that you can option a bedside step right here that is wider than that from Colorado. You can actually put two feet in it and it can support up to 300 pounds. And again, that is body side mounted and not uh, bumper mounted. Coming around to the tailgate, you can see a very nice looking tailgate right there. Looks like F-150. We do have part of the zone lighting right back here. And then a damped tailgate right here. You can see there is actually a hydraulic uh, mounting point right there. This one does have the spray and bed liner and enough power back here to power your next tailgate. So TVs, fridges, whatever you need right here. You can see there are 400 watt, 180 watt max right here, 12 volt, 120 volt on those two options right there. We do get some measurement lines here that are much more user friendly if you're actually trying to be specific with your measurements than what is found on F-150. And like F-150, you do get some clamp points back here on the back. So one thing that really stood out to us in our very short time here with the Ranger, no, unfortunately we did not get to drive it, not yet anyway. So we'll supply you with this rolling footage that Ford shared with us, but how similar the playbooks are between Ford and Chevy with their new midsize pickup trucks. Both of these followed the same pathway to the States for their last iteration. They were foreign overseas world trucks before and they were designed for those markets and brought here after the fact so we got a very late version of an old platform both of these new versions the 23 chevy colorado and the 24 ranger were both built with an american market in mind and there are a lot of similarities even going in further into the details in what we see for simplicity's sake, both trucks are crew cab only. We have been teased that Toyota is 
going to continue with their extended cab option. More details on the upcoming Tacoma will be unveiled on May 19th. But yes, crew cab only for Ford and Chevy. Also automatic only for Ford and Chevy, whereas Toyota again is teasing that third pedal with a manual transmission. So looking forward to that. But let's talk about Ford and Chevy, how these pickup trucks compare. First, all new body, all new frame, all new everything for both pickup trucks. Uh, again, they're all, both only in crew cab configuration. Ford has XL, XLT, Lariat, and Raptor trim levels, whereas Chevy has Work Truck, LT, Trail Boss, Z71, and ZR2 with some various packages that you can add on uh, just like you can with Ford. The Ford Ranger will be built in five plants worldwide, globally. Uh, it is the number two best-selling midsize pickup truck, so that's a big selling point for them with theirs. And for U.S. markets, the Ranger will be built in Wayne, Michigan. Three engines are offered in the Ranger versus multiple different tunes of the same engine in the Chevy Colorado. So what we get as the base configuration in the Ranger is a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder, making 270 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. Comparing that to the base trim of the 2.7 liter turbo four in the Colorado, making 237 horsepower and 259 pound feet of torque. Not many trucks are gonna get that engine that tune of the engine there are many different things hardware wise that make that one a detuned version but the next step up is 310 horsepower and 390 pound feet of torque which definitely rivals uh, both the 2.3 ecoboost four cylinder and the rangers 2.7 liter v6 this is also an EcoBoost model. It makes 315 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. So a little bit torquier and a little bit more horsepower there. But it is mated to a 10-speed automatic, as is the little four-cylinder. So 10-speed automatic in both, whereas Chevy has to make do with eight gears. Chevy also offers a high-output version of that engine that is standard in the ZR2 and can be optioned on others. And it makes the same 310 horsepower, but a 430 pound foot of torque level mark there, which helps it achieve a max tow rating of 7,700, whereas the Ranger tops out at 7,500. So small little differences there between the two vehicles. Some more similarities between this and the Chevy are the fact that they moved the front axle forward two inches. Chevy moved the front axle forward three inches, again helping with the off-road ability, the overall maneuverability, and just the overall wheelbase of these vehicles. It does seem that maybe Ford has given a little more room to the inside of their uh, Ranger pickup versus Chevy really decreasing the interior volume on the Colorado. So the back seat in this one, like you can see here, flips up and folds up. Also that backrest folds down, which is a huge plus. Many people have commented how Chevy got rid of that and how they lament the loss of the fold flat back seat. But it does feel like there is more room inside the Ranger than the Colorado. I love to get these back to back to really uh, flesh that out and see but yes uh, push those wheels up two inches to give you a better wheelbase and the track the width of these vehicles has been also increased by two inches so that allows up to a four foot wide items to be stored in the bed so now you can get flat sheets of plywood back there you will have to drop the tailgate because again we only get one cab and bed configuration on these pickup trucks but it is nice that we do have uh, available four width four feet of width in between those rear wheel wells and so just another thing that they are taking from Chevy's playbook. Much like the F-150, you get C-clamps on the tailgate, a ruler on the tailgate. But in the tailgate wars, nothing really too unique outside of those C-clamp channels 
for the Ranger. No in in tailgate storage like the Chevy. Moving inside here again, another playbook stolen. Uh, from Chevy is the gauge cluster, the smaller 8-inch gauge cluster screen on lower trims and the larger gauge cluster screen on Lariat and Ranger or Raptor trims. So very interesting that they two are doing the full digital gauge cluster, leaning in heavy to that. And Ford has gone vertical with their infotainment screen. Whereas Chevy and General Motors have pledged to keep horizontal screens in their pickup trucks to really emphasize width. The materials in here were good. Uh, like I said, the XLT would probably be the one that I would be shopping for. Now, this Raptor is set to go up against the ZR2. We do get those Fox shocks. Interesting, though, that we don't get 35-inch tall tires. We get the same 33-inch tall tires that can be found on the Colorado ZR2. We don't get the added width, those big over fenders from Bronco Raptor that is built off the same platform, but we get wider metal fenders and some over fenders on this one. So again, stealing from Chevy's playbook and doing a lot of what Chevy did with their trucks. They moved the uh, shock mounting points to the outside of the frame for better stability. And it also as I mentioned earlier and showed you earlier, changes the mounting point of that uh, shock to uh, the axle so you no longer have to worry about that mounting point being another low point when off-roading. Again, you can see the full digital gauge cluster here, all the different drive modes available on the Raptor. And this thing really does look good, but again, doesn't quite live up to what we were hoping or expecting based on Bronco Raptor. The Bronco Raptor really looks insane with those huge over fenders and its taller tires. So Ford did mention that with your taller tires, you lose travel on that suspension. So that was definitely a balancing act that they had to play. But the, the look of this thing is un undeniably Raptor. It follows in line with the F-150 Raptor. Very familiar styling cues from the grill, these beadlock capable wheels, and uh, the aggressive um, step slash running board. Very familiar look to the Ranger Raptor and won't be mistaken for lesser models of the Ranger. It, it definitely screams Raptor when looking at it. And this being the top trim, it gets everything. It gets the updated interior, it gets the bigger screens, it gets all, all of the good interior bits and added bash plates and skid plates and hooks on the exterior. Even a revised fender here showing a different exhaust port to get heat out of that engine bay versus the standard truck. And of course, yes, all of your Raptor badging all the way around just to scream out that you got the Raptor version. We did see this particular truck there, but we got to film with the one with the graphics package. I like the a little more understated, though not too subtle uh, version here with the just Raptor on the bedside versus all the graphics on that one. But again, you can see all the orange accents in this. I like the dual glove box setup. So that XLT did not get the dual glove box of this Raptor version. And you can see here, we also have push button start and integrated trailer brakes. So a lot of thought went into uh, the placement of these items uh, where uh, Chevy has the button on the dash. Uh, Ford has kept the start stop button on the column of the, the steering column and then in Lariat and Ranger you get that electronic gear selector uh, versus the mechanical unit we showed you in that XLT earlier. All the way around very plush very upscale interior like all the material choices here in the Raptor. And then yes we talked about power earlier when I was showing you the truck on camera myself has 95 more horsepower from the 3 liter V6 and right at the same amount of torque as the competition from Chevy. So they definitely benchmarked their competition. They're all fighting in that same area. Chevy just went a little different way about it with their Turbo 4, whereas Ford is giving you a 3 liter turbocharged V6. 
that is a very quick look at what makes the Ford Ranger so new, so unique for the 2024 model year. This is a quick first look. Huge thanks to Ford for having us out to Camp Ranger to sneak a peek at what the new American version of the 2024 Ford Ranger is like. If you want to know more about this vehicle, go find us at gtgaragetalk.com or on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk. Hit that subscribe button, follow button, like button, whatever you have to do to let the algorithms know to show you more content from us because I hope to have one of these on our home turf very soon. But from Camp Ranger outside of Detroit, Michigan, until next time, gearheads, bye.